All right, let's check out the uh, ball. So this was looking all very cool. Uh, I think my only comments would be, uh, and I sent that in the email in terms of presentation, uh, side views, so you can really look at um, the arcs and the spacing, but also it will make it a lot bigger. So you're kind of within that realm of framing, if that makes sense, versus this tiny uh, presentation there. It, it makes it a bit easier to look at things. Um, other than that, I think this is all cool. My So my biggest comment would be, you can probably start to stretch just a bit later. So you definitely have it at the end. And it's a tiny thing. It's just something where I kind of feel this, the, I see the stretch versus feeling it. And I think we can go, go a bit later to get that snappiness. Um, and it's a minor thing. Again, this is not, this is not a shock killer. I think the main thing to me that stands out is the poppiness of this. So if you have, this is your arc and you got your tail dragging here, boom, on this, I would still have a moment of your tail being up here. And I know it squashes and, and takes everything down, but there's something about having the tail up here and then as it goes up, it does this, right? So you're here, here, and you're doing exactly that. So that just felt a bit too poppy where you have the straight line, the straight line here. And watch out the straight line. I would still, since you know you have a path like this, have the tail go where um, like aligns with the path versus straight down because the ball is not going to go fully straight down. It's going to be uh, a certain um, direction and angle to it. But this might just be the angle of that camera here too. But that would be my biggest thing. Just keep keep the ball not super straight down but at that angle which means all the tail will be at that angle and then you have a bigger uh, drag here not immediately flattened down and then you can do this so it's a bit of a whipping whipping motion and then same thing here because as you get to the smaller bounces we still have those massive one frame changes especially through here that will make this very very poppy where you go from here to here as you can start reducing the amount of rotation so even through here it's good to have all the rotation but towards the end i would stick to maybe something like that where it's it does all this but at the end in terms of rotation sorry it, it rotates all of, with all of that but then towards the end it's it's kind of ending with just translates just bouncing with very minimal rotations otherwise there's just too much going on here like something like this is nice where you just have kind of that I do like how you have the end slide, but timing wise, I think a couple of things. I think you can reduce the up and down distance here. It just gets a bit too, bit too chattery. And then that comes to a stop a bit too quickly. So just, what is this one or two? So it feels like you can almost go a second longer. Maybe like 15 frames, maybe. Hold that a bit longer, a bit of a longer slider. And then go back. It just feels a bit quick and abrupt. Right there. It just kind of suddenly comes to a sudden stop. And then that's it. But the drop is nice. You might argue that if it's just a tail without life, that this drop is a bit slow. If it's just pure physics and it's bouncing and the tail is following the path, then it will go and then it will just kind of drop a bit faster. That is a bit slow since the character is not yet alive. That is about it. Picky, picky, picky stuff. Overall, it's great. I think if I had my first immediate reaction seeing this was that this was just poppy from here to here. It's a weird frame change. And then it just gets a bit poppy, you know, throughout the hits and then towards the end here, where it's a lot of little bounces. So you could just be softened towards the end. Like that, the poppiness was the first reaction. And then, you know, everything else I said, it's just kind of the extra picky stuff. Again, it's not a shock killer, but if, you know, if you want to do another revision, um, that's what I would suggest. All right, that is kind of it. Thank you. All right. So checking this out here, uh, I got some overall notes and some pickier, small detail notes. 
Um, but the main thing that I'm seeing here is the translate at the end. It seems like throughout the shot it would lose momentum and get slower and slower and slower, meaning in your in your Maya timeline, your curve would be more really calm to stop. I mean, it's not would be low, but uh, and in your case, it seems like it comes, gets slower, slower, and then suddenly accelerates again before it comes to stop. And it's kind of right there. It feels like after all this time, if it would just slide till here, and go until here. I won't go too crazy with how far it goes. Yeah, it seems too much. But the thing is, A, with this, the couple of things that come with it. A, the momentum seems a bit off because it's only accelerating. And it seems to have too much momentum compared to what was happening before. Uh, we are also stuck in the same pose where ball and tail are just kind of, it's, it's moving like a 2D card. As opposed to if it's sliding like this, it might almost do a little bit of a roll. So it might have, you know, tail might be here. It might just have a little bit of a rotation forward but then what's also weird is because it's so fast your stop is also too quick it suddenly stops right instead of going stop it goes forward stops and then kind of rolls back so don't go as far i would just cut that in half to be honest and then have a slight rotation forward still and then make sure that it really comes so that again, your graph editor, it's not just stopping right away. It has really a slow ease into that stop. And these guys have too many, like at the end, it has a bit too much there. There are a couple things, too many rotations back and forth. So it kind of goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth too many times. And the thing is too, you got to be careful when it goes back and forth. If it's a little bit, it can be okay to get away with that. But if you start having rotations like here, you want to make sure that once you rotate, it still feels like it's pivoting and kind of translating left and right a little bit. Otherwise, it looks like you're you're rotating this thing with a pivot in the middle and just kind of, it's like a, a tire spinning, you know, in a, on a wet surface, snow or whatever. Versus if you're here, even if it rotates a little bit over, the ball's going to end up <laughs> it's crazy wall. It ends up translating, and you're gonna have to rotate, um, you know, change your pivot depending on what your kind of ball setup you have here. But you want to translate the ball back a little bit so it looks like it's a it's a ball rolling and not just a slide here. It also looks like you have a bit of a translate issue. So you're here, and then it looks like the ball is translating up and down again. So keep that translate flat. It's just kind of rotating back, but it's rolling back. It's not just rotating. Uh, and then through here, I think you can get away with a little bit of a stretch here before you go into that full stretch. And then also careful, you have impact point is here, but it feels like you're pointing too straight down. Again, this is in the picky phase, but you want to make sure that the stretch is always pointed towards where it's going. See, that's that feels better. The problem with this one is that uh, with this frame is so you're here. I kind of buy that if you're, you're landing here and you would do something like that, right? But then the problem is that if this is your landing point here, the center here, the ball center is now suddenly here. If that makes sense. So you come from here, land here, and then you go backwards, like that ball will be here. So it does that versus here and then and then that basically if you trace the spacing there in the ball position. Same thing here, you can probably well let's have the bat here, you got a better bit of a sooner stretch here. Same thing here, your center seems like it's here-ish right there. So that the ball would technically be right here-ish, a bit more on the left here. Yeah, so you're kind of coming down and it's starting back here. So it's almost like you're doing this. You can probably start having less stretch towards the end. It feels a bit much. It's a bit better here. And then here, that's a bit much too. Like you're going from here to here. That's a big change for the bounces that get smaller and smaller. So you can probably go, let's just put that in, split the difference, or just a bit lower, but just not so snappy. Same thing here. From here to here is just some 
sun change, that's a bit too much. Same thing here especially. This is definitely too much. And even if it would be that far, it would be some drag. Um, so probably by now it's you're really slowing it down. And then as you go up, it would drag, drag, then it can be here. Here you're slightly compressing a bit too much. This would be a bit more extended. And then it needs to drag. That's okay. Probably not too much. You're intersecting. So it's just a lot of detail stuff here. This is okay, but when you go down, it would it would uh, counter and with the tip would drag and so on and so on and so on. So there's some funky things there. So just detail work, those little picky detail things, um, just to make this super sweet. All right, thank you. All right, there's an email. You can sign up, you can start whenever you want, you can submit whenever you want, you get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right, thank you.